Hey guys, and happy Monday. So my goal today is that we're going to get through definitely section 2.1. I'm going to try to get through some of section 2.2. I'm probably going to have to do two videos. Me and Zoom have not gotten along today. It has been kicking me off. I don't know why. Um, so probably two videos. <clears throat> my voice is going in and out because I've been at this for almost five hours. <laughs> so I'm going to hope it lasts through this one. Okay, so we're going to look at section 2.1. So let me share my screen here. And you're going to see me going back and forth a ton because there's just so much to, to share. So on section 2.1, the first thing that I want to do is we're going to look at the box on page 60. And the box on page 60, or on, on page 60, talks about how to define the average rate of change. Now, do we have a, a pretty table here? Um, average rate of change is, you know, we're, we're basically looking where we, we see um, or how the units of Y or the, the units of your vertical are changing as compared to the, the units of your horizontal. And they have a, a pretty picture here kind of showing that. So you can read through this example. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a really good example. Um, I'm not going to do it since I know you're capable of reading. So there's uh, the average rate of change of Y with respect to X is the change in Y over the change in X. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, there's a different way that I learned that. And yes, yes, there is. But we're going to talk about that different way in a couple of sections. So I'm not going to go into that idea. So really the notion of average rate of change can be used to describe the change in any variable with, with respect to another um, important part of this is if the variables represent real world quantities that have units of measure, then the average rate of change should be represented in terms of the appropriate unit. So like dollars per year or pounds per person. So please keep that in mind as you're working through this homework. Okay, so we're gonna go to page 63 and I'm gonna show you an example. <clears throat> Yeah, my voice is going to go. <clears throat> so number two, assume that R is measured in dollars, S in ounces, T in dollars per ounce, and V in ounces per dollar. Write a product to two of these terms whose resulting units will be part A dollars and part B ounces. So what they're asking us to do is they're asking us to figure out what can which one of these two things can I multiply together that I'm going to have units cancel and I'm still solely going to be left with in part A dollars and then solely going to be left with ounces of part B. So let's look at the ones that have we have in terms of dollars. So we've got R is measured in dollars. But I don't think that's going to help us because if I multiply this against anything else, it's, it's going to change out of that. Come on, pen, come on, come on, come on. Oh, my pen stopped working. Let's see, come on, yay, now my pen works. Okay, so I'd be interested in, do you see how we've got this T in dollars per ounce? So if I have dollars per ounce, that means I've got dollars on top and ounces on the bottom. If I multiply that against ounces, that's gonna leave me with just dollars by the time I'm done. So what that tells me is that here to get dollars, I would have to take T, which is my dollars per ounce, and I'd have to multiply that against S, which is my ounces. So that's how I'm going to get dollars. And if you if you want to see it, you can actually write it out. See, if I've got dollars per ounce, and I multiply that by ounces, the ounces are actually canceling out, and you're left with dollars. So that's that's how we get dollars. If I want to get ounces, let's do the opposite here. Let's take our dollars, right? R, which is measured in dollars. I'm going to multiply that against V in ounces per dollar. You're going to see the dollars canceling out, and you're going to be left with ounces. So to get this one, I would multiply V times R. It's a really interesting question. Really, the takeaway from this question is the units tell us a whole lot about what it is we're looking at. So just keep that in mind as you're working through this. Okay, let's look at, let me clear this out. Let's look at number six. <clears throat> Go away. Number six, the percentage of people who own homes in the United States has gone from 65.5% in 1980 to 67.6% in 2009. 
What is the average rate of change in percentage points per year? So they're telling me how my percentages have changed. So I don't have to use that whole entire formula where it says change in Y or change in X. They've kind of done that for me. So when they ask me to find the average rate of change in percentage points here, they're simply asking me to, oh, wait, did I miss something? <clears throat> no, uh, I'm going to lose my voice. Uh, so they're asking us, but we're doing it in terms of years, right? So here, when I talk about the, the change, we have changed 65.5% to 67.6%, right? So if I was to subtract that out, that would give me, so 67.6 minus 65.1, that would be 2.1. That would be our change in how many years? So the, the change in years would be 2009 minus 1980, 2009 minus 1980, which is going to be 29. So if I want to figure out what my average rate of change is per year, now do you see how it told me which one to put on the bottom? The per year is going to be on the bottom. So I'm dividing like this. This is my percentage point and this is my, my year. So if I do 2.1 divided by 29, I'm going to get 0 0.7. I think it rounded. I'm pretty sure it rounded. So 0 0.7 percentage point, and that would be per year. My pen does not like to write words. I have a hard time getting it to write numbers. So it is what it is today. So 0.7 percentage points per year. Very right, cool. So right now, you know, this this isn't looking super complicated. And again, I know what you're thinking. You're like, no, no, there's another formula that I use to do this. And you are correct. There is. But I'm going to hold off and show it to you later. I got to give you a reason to keep coming back to class, right? Okay, let's clear this out. Uh, what do I want to look at now? Let's look at number 10. So number 10. So according to the U.S. Bureau of the Census, the percentage of persons 25 years old and over completing four or more years of college was 4.6 in 1940 and 29.4 in 2008. Part A, plot the data labeling both axes and the coordinates of the points. Part B, calculate the average rate of change of percentage points per year. And part C, write a topic sentence summarizing what, what you think the central idea is. All right. I don't have enough space <clears throat> to be able to do this. So I'm going to go, I'm going to stop share, and then I'm going to reshare a whiteboard. Oh, come on, stop. My little, my little box over here is in my way. I really want this to be moved. Okay. <clears throat> So the first thing I want to do, let me write down our information that we had here. We said that in 1940, it was 4.6%. And then we said in 2008, it was 29.4%. And I have no idea how it's going to look, me drawing a graph on here, but we're going to try. So let me flip my computer around where I can actually draw on the screen a little bit easier. Okay. So here we go. This isn't pretty, but it's going to do. Uh, I think on the bottom, I'm going to go up by 10. So I'm going to start 1935. And I'm going to go up by 10, so this would be 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. That's not by 10s at all, is it? 35, here we go, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 2005, 
Okay, that was a big thing. So that's my bottom. Now I want to make sure I'm labeling my axes. <clears throat> so this would be in terms of years. So that's years. And then we've got our percentages over here. <clears throat> I'm going to go up by fives on here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So if I was to plot these points now, we've got 1940 is 4.6. So 1940 is going to be there. 4.6 is almost 5. Something like that. And guys, my pen doesn't like to make dots, so these may be really skewed when you go look at them. That's okay. 2008 and 29.4, so 2008's gonna be somewhere like right and here. 29.4 is gonna be somewhere right in there. It just, it just doesn't wanna make dots. I don't know why. Okay, so here's kind of what we're looking at. Whoa. And uh, one of the things that I'm missing, and I remember to be a good graph, you need to have your axes labeled. Your data needs to be kind of, you know, there. Go see what we're looking at. And I need a title. So I'm going to say this is the percentages. Of those. Um, I think it's what greater than. 25 or older. So I'm, must, I'm just going to write 25. Greater than or equal to 25 years of age. Completing. Uh, more than or four or more than uh, years of college. Now, don't send me emails angry that you can't read my writing. It's not my fault. It's the pens. It doesn't it doesn't have a very big tip to it, so it's very hard to write on. But anyways, there we go. So it's a percentage of times greater than or equal to 25 years of age, completing more than or greater than or equal to four years of college. That's part A. All right. Now part B asks us to find the average rate of change. So I'm going to get rid of this graph. I'm just going to erase it. Come on. And to find the average rate of change, I'm going to subtract these values out. Racing is oddly relaxing. <laughs> okay. Okay, so part B, the average rate of change. Come on. It may make a difference if I make this bigger. I have a feeling it's, it's going to make it worse. So the average rate of change per year. So because it's per year, I'm going to take my 29.4. Oh my gosh, yes, that is much worse. Let's not do that. We'll go down back to the uh, pin little line there. So I'm going to take 29.4. Oh, come on, and I've got to click two. Oh, I think my pens are dying. May I have to try to finish this out with my finger. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to take my 29.4. I'm going to subtract from it 4.6. Okay. And when I do that, I'm going to get, I don't know. We'll finish it. Um, where's my calculator? 29.4 minus 4.6. That's going to give me 24.8. And then I'm going to, uh, on the bottom, I'm going to have 2008 minus 1940. And that's going to give me 68. And then if I do 24.8 divided by 68, I get a grand total of 0 0.36. 0 0.36. And that is percentage points. My finger rats just as good as that pen did. 
per year. So that's my units. <clears throat> so a topics, a possible topics units that we could say, we could say, oh, from 1940 to 2008, the percentage of college grads has increased by 24.8 percentage points. Right, this number, it's increased by that number. So over the course of 68 years, we've had a 24.8 percent increase, or percentage point increase. All right, cool. So I'm gonna clear this, close that. Let's stop share with the whiteboard. Let's go back to our book. And let's look at number 12. So number 12, the following graph was produced by the US Department of Transportation to report actual and predicted highway crash fatalities up until 2020. The left-hand axis shows the number of highway fatalities and the right-hand axis the percent of all crashes that were fatal. So in part A, estimate the number of fatalities Y1. So it's telling us which line we're supposed to look at. In 1965 and 1995, and calculate the annual average rate of change. Part B, estimate the number of fatalities in 1995 and 2020, calculate the average rate of change. Then part C, the fatality rate between 1995 and 2020 is predicted to be flat, while the number of fatalities is expected to increase. How could that be? All right, number or part A. Change colors, let's do red. I think it's, oh, whatever. Okay, so uh, first thing I need to do is let's get our two points. So let's do 1965. And if I look at 1965, which is right here, right here's gonna be my point up here. Um. So 1965, let's say 1965 is about 48. No, oh, I looked at the wrong graph, didn't I? Okay, there, there, there. If I make my dot big enough, that's going to hit it. So that, that's Y1, and the, the light of blue is Y2. So I'm going to say uh, 1965 is going to be uh, 48,000 maybe. There's one, one point. Uh, we were also asked to find 1995. 1995 is here, and then I want to go up to Y1, right in there. So maybe 1995 to 43,000. Okay. And then while I'm at it, because I, I'm going to have to find 2020 anyways, let's go ahead and find 2020. It's going to be up here. <clears throat> so 2020, I'm thinking it's going to be 65,000. Yeah, we'll just do 65,000. So 2020 is 65,000. Okay, so that's going to give us enough information to find parts A, B, and C. So average rate of change. So for part A, I'm going to do 43, let's see, I'm going to do 43,000. And I'm going to subtract from that 48,000 because that's going to give me my change in the number of fatalities. And I'm going to divide that by my year. So I'm going to do 1995 minus 1965. And if you work this out, because I am out of room, you are going to get, I think it ends up being negative 5,000 over 30. If you divide that out, it's going to be a negative one point, no, negative 166.7 car fatalities. Per year. Oh, I about did something bad. Okay, so that, that's part A, so negative 166.7 car fatalities per year. Part B is going to ask us to do the same thing, but instead of 1965 and 1995, we're going to do 1995 and 2020. So let me erase this. So same thing, just changing my numbers here. Go away. Okay, I picked my color. Good. So I'm going to do 65,000. Minus 43,000. 
and I'm going to divide that by 2020 minus 1995. And that is going to give me, if I divide and, or if I subtract and divide out, we're going to get 22,000 over 25, which is going to give us 880 car fatalities per year. Okay, so in part C, the fatality rate between 1995 and 2020 is predicted to be just about flat or just below, is expected or predicted to be flat, just below 2%, while the number of fatalities is expected to increase. How could that be? So what they're talking about here is you see how this kind of flattens out to be just like 2% or a little below 2%. Why is it that we see this big, huge increase here then? And we were flattening out. So what what could possibly cause that? So if you end up thinking about, you know, we've got an increasing population, we've constantly got more and more people getting their driver's license. That's actually what would, would cause it to, to do that. Is if you're increasing the number of driving cars during the time period, you're you're gonna see more fatalities, but you're gonna see like the actual percentage rate, the fatality rate um, level out because you've got more people. So even though your fatalities are going up, you've got more people driving. So that would cause it to level out. All right, cool. So that was number, number 12. Let me clear this out. Which one do I wanna look at now? Um, I was going to do number 14, because it, it's the very same process. You're going to find um, 1960 to 1980. Now, notice, be careful where it says cigarette consumption. So 1960 to 1980, you would, you'd use 1960 and 484 and 1980 to 631. Go through, find your average rate of change and do it again for 1980 to 2007, 1960 to 2007. So, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to skip that. Um, Part B does switch to be exports, so you'd use like 1960 and 20 and 2007 and 102, but, you know, the math is still the same. So, you know, I just, I don't think, I'll, I don't think there's a need for us to do it because it's exactly the same thing that we just got through doing. Okay, cool. So that's really all I have for section 2.1. I'm going to do a quick video for section 2.2. Um, I'm only doing two problems on section 2.2 because I've not decided that I wanted to cover any more material from that. So there you go. So we come back for section 2.2.